Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Do have another episode with you, Emil. How you doing? Well, thanks. How are you? Good, mate. Um, today, or in this episode, we're going to be talking about the identity of our generation. Yeah. Um, we saw Jesus speaking about his generation. Um, I can start with a passage just Please. to get get an idea of what we're where we're going with this. And that's in Matthew eleven sixteen to 19. But to what shall I liken this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourned to you and you did not lament. For John ne uh, came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man, and that's Jesus speaking about himself, came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a wine, what, wine bibber? I think so. Um, a, friend of, uh, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is justified by her children. Mm. So Jesus obviously speaks about the, the reality of the generation that he was in. Yeah. Um, and today we're... We, you see this all over the internet, right? Whether it's news, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, wherever you go, people are trying to make sense of this life, right? Yeah. Who are we as a generation? Um, w what are we trying to achieve? Where are we going with, with everything that we have at the moment? But we obviously want to look at it from the lenses of Christianity, mm -hmm. right? Biblical lenses. So we want to discern this generation and, and see, biblically speaking, who are we? I think that we can start with something like that. Well, what is our generation looking like at the moment? Mm. Well, I see our generation as, um, and this is just internal, this is not Christians, this is our generation. Yeah, um, it's humans. Yeah, it's humans. I see as self-loving. They're they love their identity. They love who they are. They're being taught to be proud, you know, have mm -hmm. pride and have this um, grandeur sense of self. Like it's, I'm so amazing. I'm so beautiful. I'm so perfect the way I am. I don't need to change. Uh, I don't need to listen to instruction. Any instruction to me, even if it's constructive criticism, is, is just foolish and it's something that's an attack against me like like almost identical to a physical attack it's like you're attacking me and i have to defend myself with everything i have and that's how i see our generation as people who are weak mm. physically mentally and uh spiritually yeah so on the first point that you said you said lovers of self mm. right would you say we're we're getting we are getting to that place where we are making gods of ourselves 100 percent, right and it, it seems like our opinion dictates our truth if if that makes it sense does. Yeah. yeah so i think that's i believe that's happening today hmm. because you've got even children today yeah. right that they are turning their bodies into things that they didn't start with right they weren't born that way yeah and thinking that well, because my opinion is that, because that's how I feel, therefore I'm going to change my physical appearance. Yeah. But then you look at that and you're like, what makes you think that your opinion is truth? Mm. What makes you think that your opinion is best for you? That's yeah. something a lot of people don't even pay attention to. What makes you think your opinion is be the best for you? Yeah. What makes you think that others who are not living in your body, right? <clears throat> others around you, your parents, your family members, your friends. Why, why can't they be more discerning the, than you? They can. Yeah. So this whole idea that because I feel this way, that means this is the best decision for me. Yeah. That means it's the truth. And that, that means it's going to go, I'm going to go with it. That's, you're, you're basically your own God. Yeah, they but, are. 
Um, and that's where um, Satanism has changed from the past to now. It's most Satanists don't believe that Satan is real. They just mm -hmm. believe that Satanism is, I am God, I worship myself. That's what Satanism, Satanism is for them. Do what thou wilt. Mm. You know, do whatever. And, and honestly, yeah. when, I, when I see our generation, I'm like, it feels like they're all living like Satanists. Do whatever you want. You are your own God. With it naturalist sprinkling yeah. on top of 100%, it 100 yeah that's what's disguising it yeah yeah and uh if you ask most of them do you actually believe in lucifer or a demon no i just believe that i do whatever i want and that's what it means to be a satanist to me that's what it and 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 that's the thing that's well that's what satan did so in in a way they are worshiping satan they are being like satan himself hmm. worshiping themselves making themselves god yeah. And I mean, that was Lucifer's downfall. It was pride. Mm -hmm. It was putting himself in a position or seeing himself as, as a position that he, he was not in, which was God's. Mm -hmm. And in you <clears throat> saying that, basically, if people are embracing the work of Satan, mm -hmm. then they will kind of um, disagree with the work of God 100%. and hate it. And that's what we just read in this passage, yeah. right? Um, John the Baptist, Jesus came, and they did the will of uh, of God the Father, but they, they hated it. yeah. But everyone said, "Oh, these guys are possessed. These guys are drunkard. They're hanging out with the tax collectors and so on." So the person that's doing good, and the person that's giving out truth and good advice, biblical advice, is the person that's getting shunned. Yeah, but the person that thinks because it's their body. They think that they have the authority over it and they own it is the person that's actually doing things against the will of God. Mm. Because if you read across the Bible, we see so many times in the Bible, it's speaking about how God is our creator, has authority over our lives. We live to please him. We live to praise him. But then they take the way of Satan. Yeah. They go and say, God doesn't dictate who I am and what I do with my body. I get to choose that choice. Yeah. And then you see this even affects some Christians because they're like, oh, well, clearly they're speaking about non-Christians. No. Um, we went out, this was a while ago, um, we went out preaching the gospel and you were there, but uh, it was me and Stephen, you know, Brother Stephen. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out together and we were uh, just handing out pamphlets and giving them the gospel, putting a seed there and hoping that it grows. Um, and one of the people I went to and I said, Hey, um, you're a sinner. You need to be saved. That's the message we're preaching. And Jesus paid for your sins. You can be saved. Just accept Jesus. He's like, Oh, you're the sinner. I'm like, yes, I am a sinner. <laughs> I, and he's like, Oh, you should speak for yourself. I'm like, I am. I am also a sinner. I need Jesus too. You know, without Jesus, we are all dead. He's like, no, speak for yourself. I am speaking for myself. And it was just, he felt like he was, I was attacking him. That's it, like from the way he spoke, it felt like. He saw, saw what I said as an attack, as an affront to him. Mm. And I felt like he was, it wasn't only like defensive. It felt like he wanted to go on that attack because he was so offended. And, and all I said was, you're a sinner. You need Jesus. Ooh. I'm a sinner. Yeah. I need Jesus. And he went, he went in an attack mode. Like, how dare you? Yeah. That, that reminds me of uh, John 3, <clears throat> 20 and 21 around there. Speaking about that, those people that don't want to come to the light because their deeds are going to be exposed. Mm -hmm. And there are certain people that be like, don't talk about me. Don't talk about my life. I want to keep that in the dark. And they don't understand that the only reason why we want to shed light to you is so you can recognize the darkness that's in you. Yeah. And, and be freed from it. Yeah. So the whole point is that if we leave you alone, in, in your darkened life, then that darkness is going to drag you down to hell. But the reason why we come and share the gospel to this yeah. generation is to say, your darkness is not your friend. It's not going to be beneficial to you. It's not helping you out, spiritually speaking. Yeah. You need to get rid of it. You need to come to the light. You need to come to Jesus and he can heal you from that. He can take you away from that. He's the only one that can separate us from our own darkness. That's right. And people that try and 
do it on their own, trying to, you know, fix few things around their life and think that, oh yeah, I'll just try and make sense of this life. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Yeah, and yeah. Um, we were also talking to a few Christians and we were telling them like, hey, because um, this was like in a place where people were drinking and, mm -hmm. and you know, going partying and whatnot. And we said, hey, um, have you heard of Jesus? Says, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, that's good. Um, so have you repented from your sins? Have you, you know, are you, are you, have you given your life to Jesus? Are you born again? And she said, oh, I don't believe in that. I believe that you should not judge, you know, judge not lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. I said, well, technically that's condemn. I'm not condemning you. Um, we are meant to be judging each other, yeah. you know, based on the word of God, of course. Um, and we have to, but I'm not going to condemn you. You know, I'm not saying you're going to go to hell. All I'm saying is, if you live the way you're living right now, you're in danger. You know? Yeah. That's all I'm saying to you. Since you said it, just in case someone might think, wait, hold on. Um, where does the Bible say that we, we judge each other? And this is Paul saying it at the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And he's speaking about, you know, the people that claim to be Christians mm -hmm. and those who are, you know, within within the church fellowship and this is starts with verse 11 i guess by now i have written to you uh not to keep company with anyone called a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater <clears throat> or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner not even to eat with such a person for what have i to do with judging those also uh, sorry for what have i uh, to do with judging those also who are outside do you not judge those who are inside but those who are outside god judges therefore put away from yourselves yeah. the evil person yes paul is saying very clearly that if you're in the church if you claim to be a brother call yourself a brother but you live that kind of lifestyle i cannot have fellowship with you right i'm i'm here to, to help you if, if you're willing to but let go Martin, of that sin. Martin, how are we supposed to know that those people are like that? It's almost like we have to make a judgment. Oh, well, yeah, that, <laughs> that's why Paul is saying, if you're inside the church, you then can be judged. you are being judged. And that comes according to the word of God. Yes. I don't get to make up my own rules and say, hey, I'm, I'm your brother in Christ. I'm going to judge you, but then I'm going to make up my own rules. That's not what Paul is saying. That's right. It's according to the word of God, we pass judgment. And there is a difference between the way we judge as Christians and a person would condemn someone else. Right? Yeah. We judge a person is to shed light on the sin, to offer help, right? If you need help, we're here for you, right? And guide them through the process of repentance. Yeah. And but, if they're struggling with our judgment, then they're yeah. going to definitely have a problem when yeah. God judges them. But um, what people, I, I feel like, uh, see it as uh you know passing on judgment is oh you want to condemn me no. you just want to point out my sins no. but guess what you too have sins and you're like yes, yes we're here to I help agree each with other <laughs> yeah. right yeah. yeah and i think it's they see it as criticism when it's supposed to be constructive criticism and look some christians do cross like you know walk mm. that line where it's mm. like they're no longer trying to help them they're just trying to put them down you know and there are some Christians that do that. God hates these people. God hates that. And it's, no, God loves everyone. God yeah. loves us. God loved the world. God he loved his yeah. God and son. God loves us while, God loved us while we were sinners. And he still does. But, but, he is a perfect judge. If we stay the way we are, and we do not accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, there still has to be judgment for that sin. Even though he loves us. Even though it hurts him. He still has to judge us and condemn us if we are guilty. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this generation, <clears throat> they, like, if, if they recognize the truth, they will realize and appreciate uh, why Christians go out and share the gospel. Because we love them. Why Christians stand for the truth. Yeah. Right? Today, we are kind of substituting truth for a lie. Mm. And we are building a culture that's full of lies, uh, that truth is becoming so foreign to, to us, mm. right? Um, 
that's something we you know we we had a discussion previously with yes with abraham uh we were talking about um you know god's design in marriage it's between one man one woman yep. it's something that is after that covenant that you make with each other in marriage mm -hmm. um you have children you build them up in the lord today that is bit by bit becoming more foreign right so we are getting to a culture where truth is no longer looking familiar to us yeah yeah it's... and it seems like we actually need to teach people the what we call common sense right which is your yeah. simple truths um but yeah that's um that's a bit scary we're it's... getting to that place I, i'm gonna take inspiration from a book from Tolkien, um the Silmarillion. And it's talking about um, one of the um, Valar or angels uh, that he created in his fictional work. Mm. Uh, and this is the same writer that wrote The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings. And this is all inspired from Christianity, of course. And there was one of the angels who was called uh, Morgoth uh, or Melkor. Um, and he was uh, jealous that he could not create life like, like the God could right mm. and when god was creating his creation all he could do was sing his own song to corrupt that creation he could not create his own all he can do is corrupt what god already created mm. right and you see that here it's the devil cannot create something right from nothing he can't but what he can all the only thing he can do is corrupt what god has already created that's his form of revenge like a like a last stand type thing that's all he can do he cannot make his own thing he can't he's incapable but he can corrupt and that's what he does and you see that he's corrupting what god created which is this institute called marriage this covenant that was between god and man he's corrupted it yeah and you see so, that in everything well in, in saying that and and we're very aware that we are living in a generation where it is backslidden mm -hmm. um christianity is not being embraced it's something that's being mocked it's something that is being detested right especially when we are fighting for things that are very common like common sense right fighting for life say no that's my body that's my choice i get to kill that child because that's what it pleases me and you think well the sense of morality is no longer there no and and it's become so twisted so corrupted as you it said is. yeah that people try and justify murder today I mean, before the only reason that was even acceptable was if the mother's life was at risk, and then they'll give that option. Mm. Like, um, we, we have yeah, to, it's yeah, like you got to choose between. Yeah. yeah, and that was the only time, or if the baby was already stillborn, you know. Mm. Um, otherwise, that was never an option. Like, it was not something considered. Like, it was, it was foreign, and it's become normal to do that, and it's, yeah. It's, because it's pretty it's 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 back like it's a slippery slope right and we've gone so far down yeah it's and you, you might be thinking how worse how bad can it get can it get any worse it will it will it will yeah this is just a start unfortunately we're not even halfway there in my opinion and, and that's tough because the way god like designed a mother is for her to protect her children right we can't even see that in the wild right it's to protect the child to embrace the child and so on and and today it's like it, god's truth doesn't matter to me god's design for my body no longer is important to me and that worship of self really sums up our generation where we've kind of taken god away from that yeah. throne of worship and put ourselves on there and sometimes people would look at Hitler, would look at all these really terrible people, right, yeah, in, yeah. in the past. Like, well, we're killing more babies than those people ever killed, yeah. human beings. Yeah. But we just try and justify it in a in a different way. It's not a baby. It's still not alive. It's still not. It's. Yeah, it's a fetus. It's, it's, it's this and it's that. And... It's but, murder with extra steps. That's all it is. And it's. It is what it is. Um. But, but but here here's my question to you. You're saying that clearly there's been some kind of corruption because of sin. 
corruption in very nature. You see, like, a mother's very nature is supposed to protect her child. Mm. She's going against nature. And it feels normal to her. It feels like abnormal to go against it. Right? And you can see that for other things, such as homosexuality. It's, mm. it's my nature. It's who I am. This is normal to me. It feels foreign to me to go against this nature. Do you think sin can physically physically corrupt a person to the point where their very nature is aligned with that sin oh yeah of course i, I mean that started from the ver very first sin mm. it, it literally altered our Fair. our lifespan yeah right oh yeah Jeez, it, it physically ki killed us right it's yeah. killing us slowly so yes we sin has corrupted everything in us yeah. that's why jesus had to come in the flesh and i like the you know the church fathers when they speak about you know the incarnation yes. and and jesus death on the cross speaking about that jesus spirit soul and body came to sanctify and and justify our spirit soul and body yeah so all of jesus saves all of man yeah that, that's that's very important for yeah. us but but the whole point of it man is so aligned like the corruption of sin is down to the core that we we no longer understand what god's identity is mm -hmm. and his light no longer is, is um what's it called is shining in our lives that we see what we're doing because to be honest with you if you put yourself in a room that is pitch black mm -hmm. there is not a little tiny ray of light that room could look as messy as it can ever be you, wouldn't know. you would not notice and that's what the law is for right that's where the law came in the, it was yeah. to show us how dirty we are but that didn't save us that didn't clean the room no that's well, where jesus comes in. Th they thought they got the law is to live up to god's standard but soon impossible. they recognized that it was actually just to show their sins yeah yeah and yeah. And, and, and that's why jesus says i did not come to abolish it to fulfill it to fulfill it yeah it's it's so important um so, so some of the points that we've spoken about mm -hmm. we spoke about um that our generation is no longer desiring to know the truth mm -hmm. or to pursue it we are comfortable living a lie uh, we're no longer wanting to have the light of god to you know um to recognize our sin and mm -hmm. to understand who we are and where we are and what we need to do yeah um we are backing away from the light we want to live in darkness because a dark life um no one can notice what we're doing uh and we can justify whatever we're trying to do we are not living according to our god given nature right because sin seemingly has corrupted our very core mm. it, it has affected our very own identity and we spoke about abortion we spoke about homosexuality and even you know you have this modern transgender movement going on today that people are just putting themselves in their pedestal putting themselves on the throne and Which saying me. i am my own god yeah. and whatever my desires are that's shut it today tomorrow yeah. whenever it is i live according to my desires and it's not only it's it's no longer only I do what I want. It's you have to acknowledge what I want and acknowledge my reality. Yeah. It's like, I'm okay with, okay, you want to worship yourself? By all means, go ahead. I don't think it's safe for you and I will tell you otherwise yeah. for your sake, you know, because I care about you. But if you want to continue, that's on you. But don't make me believe your fairy tales and believe your reality, which is not real. Yeah. And reality is not subjective. Mm. it's not all oh, it's one reality for me no it's it's objective it's reality is reality mm. you're delusional unfortunately you need help and i want you to get help because i care about you because we have to have this unconditional love for them just like god has yeah. for us and that's what god wants for us to do and so i i love them and i care about them but they see that love that that instruction as something that they detest well, that brings up a good question. Hmm. What would you encourage the Daniels of today? Right? Because there's a, there's a lot of our brothers and sisters that are. 
oh yeah we're not like you know we're not gonna make that mistake you know i'm the only person you know you no. have those kind of people i'm the only person that's doing the right thing he's like relax you, you have the church that you have millions of people that love the lord they're serving the they're lord they're dying. standing for the truth for god um but for those who feel like man i'm i feel like i'm so so alone in, in this in this situation my family my friends the culture around me the country that oh, i'm living me. in it feels like you know the whole thing is a going against god and his word I feel like we're captive in babylon yeah what would you say to the daniel oh man it's gonna be tough i'd say i'd say just like daniel persevered by having god with him and having that that faith and the the discipline to just follow what god wanted him to do I'd say that we have to live that type of life and just make God our hope and not people, places and things because the world will just disappoint you. Your family will disappoint you. No one, your friends, no one, not even the church on earth is going to, it's going to, you know, be your, be as you want it to be. It's someone will let you down. So don't put your hope, your faith in these people. Don't put in people and things because they'll let you down. Put it in God. And how can we, where our nature is very our very nature is corrupt trust in our nature or other people's nature we can't the only, the only thing we have is the word of god and the holy spirit that's all we have and that's all we should put our trust in it and even then we have to be very we have to have discernment we have to be very careful because now they're even altering the bibles and adding things and removing things uh you got like for example the jehovah's witness bible is re removing and altering things and it's like clearly there's a motive so you have to have discernment. You have to have wisdom. And where do you get it from? What's the beginning of wisdom, Martin? Fear of the Lord. Amen. That's mm. what we need in our lives. Fear the Lord. Do not fear people. They can kill your flesh, but they cannot kill your soul. Fear God. Yeah. Amen. So being faithful, standing for the truth, and fearing the Lord. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Amen. Uh, one thing I would encourage um, the people out there is come out of it come yeah. out of where you are don't share in their sin that's something very important be the light and the salt to these people um just because they are doing wrong and you believe in the truth it doesn't mean you should be silent your voice must be heard mm -hmm. and i know sometimes persecution follows, follows in these things um preach the gospel the the message never gets old the message still is there power has power to save people and that's what first corinthians chapter one talks about paul makes it very clear he's saying to those who are perishing it's foolish to them but to us who are being saved it's, it's the power of god yeah. there are people out there that are looking for the truth they might be living in darkness they might be confused mm. but they need people like you and me to take that first step and say well do you know about Jesus? Have yeah. you heard about what God has done for you in your life? And sometimes we think this message is so common, but you'll be surprised how many people don't actually know the gospel. They might have heard certain things. They might have seen Jesus on a cross. You know, people see that every Easter, right? Every, every um, oh, what's it called? Christmas. They People talk about the birth of Jesus. But... They don't know the full truth no. and and you're there to to make a difference just because the culture is going one way and uh, just be faithful like daniel stand up your ground yeah. even if if they do things like with daniel's like you gotta pray and worship the king no i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna stand for the truth even if that's gonna make me end up in the lion's den that's so important so i'm just encouraging you don't feel alone don't don't feel like um you know you're that one person and everybody else believes differently it's not that the church is the body of christ it has different members we're all over the world yeah and we are praying for each other that's the beauty of of christianity is that the saints we're praying for each other and we are interceding on behalf of each other and god is working in us i just want to encourage you the person that is in you is greater than the world. That's something that you can take. If you're going to take something from this message, remember, 
that as bad as this generation goes, the person that is in you is greater than the world. And this generation, just like the previous generation, arises up and it falls. It happens generation after generation after generation. But the thing that stands and continues is God's word. It's God's spirit. Like Peter, he speaks about the grass of the field. He speaks yeah. about the glory of man, which is his flower. It just comes up and it just fades away. It just perishes. But then God's word is continually there forever. So what is, what would your conclusion be or your final words before we, we end our episode? I think you said it. Stand for truth. Do not compromise uh, for the world because um, you may gain the world, but you'll lose the most important thing you have, your soul. Hmm. Well, my conclusion is um, the whole point of this episode is for us to be discerning yeah. in what where we are living and, and how our generation is looking like. Yes. And the reason why I'm saying that we need to be discerning is because if we know what the problem is, then we can start praying for a solution or finding a solution. Amen. Um, a lot of times we're, we're sitting there, um, you know, scratching our heads thinking, what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Yeah. Uh, we're struggling with that. But as Christians, we have the Bible as our guide to have that spirit of discernment to understand, okay, this is what the Bible says. This is how this generation is living. Now I know what the problem is. Yeah. Now I know what to pray for, how I can minister these people, how I can reach them with the gospel and yeah. so on. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and God bless you. We'll see you next time. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.